do remember my first day. Uh, it was nerve-wracking, it was exciting, uh, and it was that step from being a student to finally being an architect and actually seeing what you do at university uh, in the real workplace. Uh, it's we when you when you move from a university uh, location where you are your master of your own destiny, and then you move into the workplace, uh, you're going from the proverbial uh, big fish in a little pond to a very small fish in a humongous pond, and uh, that is uh, really nerve-wracking when you uh, go into that scenario, and you realise how little you do know, uh, and it's building on what you've learnt at university. What do I know before joining the construction industry? Um, I suppose coming into it naively is a good thing, because knowing the complexities involved uh, before actually going through the motions uh, I think could put a lot of people off. Uh, the complexities uh, revolving around planning law, complexities revolving around uh, the building code. Uh, when you, again, working in the university environment, you don't necessarily have to follow the codes. Uh, but in reality, if you want buildings built, uh, they uh, do constrain the way you design. And to some degree, you have to use your creativity uh, to overcome those so that you can get the best out, you can get, get the best building out of the, uh, the design, but still be co-compliant. I think promotion is very important. It's very important both within the industry and both personally. And uh, that promotion uh, is the progress of your career. So one doesn't want to remain in the same position forever and a day. And it's important that uh, you do seek promotion. And promotion is also recognition from the company back to you, that you have developed your skills, you have uh, been able to I uh, see uh, beyond the limited uh, understanding that you come out of university. Um, but to be promoted, I think you need to have flexibility. You have to show that you are willing to work in whatever field, in what, whatever duty. I wouldn't say the industry is addicted to long hours. It is ingrained in uh, an architect during their study. Many times you watch the sun go down and come back up again the next, the next morning. Uh, so one, when one moves from being a student into the workplace, you bring that work, work ethic with you. And uh, certainly in the first few years, uh, you are experiencing new things. And so you want to uh, work long hours. Uh, but I think the industry does recognise the work-life balance and, uh, and as you develop in your you know, career one learns to time manage your, uh, your time and I tend to try and work until uh, the end of the day around half past five, six o'clock and then go home because I have a family and family is just as important as my career. keeps me awake at night. <laughs> All those little things that one hasn't resolved yet in a design. Uh, when, when you are designing a building, uh, it's one of the few careers you can actually conceive something in your mind and uh, you can actually experience the reality of it. So you can design a, a, a space and ultimately you can walk into that space. And there's a huge kick in, in doing that. And that's what drives me. What keeps me awake at night is resolving those little things which make sure that the project comes together. Why did
did I join the construction industry? As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an architect. I cannot think of a time when I didn't want to be an architect. Don't know why. I don't know who put that seed in my brain. I, it was always there. And I worked right the way through school to achieve that end. So why I joined the construction industry, it was ingrained in my being, I think. In the current economic market, the biggest challenge is to bring in uh, young architects, young designers into the industry. If we don't do that, we could lose an entire section of uh, the design uh, capabilities. Uh, and uh, the reality of that is that there will be a block of uh, design uh, people who won't in the industry. And as people retire and move on, we need people to take those places. So I think that is, is a very important element. Uh, the other challenge within the industry is, at the moment, we are being over-pressed uh, by uh, uh, legislation. Our ability to free think, to be able to create buildings which people enjoy working in, uh, is being compressed by uh, legislation and it's, it does control the way we design. Finally, I think the ability for people to, uh, to grow within the industry, and again that comes down to the economic climate we have. This, I think, is an historic uh, scenario. Historic as in it, it, it still persists, but it's something that has been part of the industry for a long time. And one is not going to uh, overcome that uh, very quickly. And it's a step-by-step -step process. Why they're underrepresented in the industry? I, I think that it's very difficult we work in, a, in, in an industry where the, we, we are project driven. You know, we are working to deadlines uh, for clients uh, and sometimes over a short period of time. I think that uh, a lot of women who come into the industry uh, and then have children find it very difficult to come back and work part time because the industry isn't geared up to that. And I think that's not a reflection on the woman, I think it's a reflection on the industry. But it is very difficult for someone to work part-time when a client is saying, I want that bit of information now, and I'm paying you for that bit of information. And so uh, it, there's a dis disjunction there. I would certainly say within HOK, we have a lot of women who uh, have moved up in the, uh, the ranks. Uh, we've got people who are leading uh, sectors. So it's, there's, I, I don't think there is a, uh, any difference between a male or a female. Uh, it's just their ability to break through in the industry. And ultimately, I think what we as an industry want to get to is employing the right person for the right job, be it male or female.